Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 3A of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 73, and the question I'm going to do is number 16. It reads, A particle projected horizontally from the top of a vertical cliff 78.4 metres high, with initial speed 98 metres. How much time will pass before it hits the sea? That's part A. Now, this one, of course, involves the concept of a displacement. And I've spoke about this in reasonable depth in, on uh, question 15 of this exercise 3A. So if you want a bit more detail, go to look at that question. However, displacement essentially is as follows. If this represents a cliff, okay, and displacement is how far is, is how far between the, is the initial point and the final point. It's irrelevant of uh, where the particle went in between. So if this was, we'll say, F represents final, I represents initial. So the displacement here, if I was to we'll say jump off the bottom, off the top of the cliff, would be uh, we'll say it's 78 meters tall. The displacement would be 78 meters. However, that does not mean that uh, the distance travelled was 78 meters. For example, if I was on some sort of a rocket pack or something like that, and I flew around and did all this sorts of movement, and then eventually ended up at the bottom of the cliff, my distance travelled would not be 78 meters. However, my displacement would be, how far is the final from the initial points, the displacement would be 78 meters. Now, however, displacement is actually a vector, and for that reason it has a sign. And in our, we'll say, our Cartesian plane, where we have x and y, and y is, the positive y is up this direction. So, in actual fact, my final point is lower than my initial point, and therefore my displacement would be negative 78 meters. Alright, so displacement is a vector. So that's the, I suppose, the most important part in this particular question. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, once again, notice that we have negative 9.81 meters per second squared for gravity in this direction. We have our x and y plane, or our Cartesian plane made, and also we have our unit vectors i hat and j hat. So now I'm going to sketch the motion. I'm going to sketch it on a velocity time diagram as normal. Velocity measured in meters per second is time measured in seconds. Now, while that's not 100%, it isn't correct, in fact, to draw a, a position on this, I'm going to say, however, that this position here is the top of my cliff. And we know that that point there is 78.4 meters from this position here. And the particle is projected horizontally. All right, is that correct? It is pr projected horizontally. Now, what that means, of course, is, well, let's draw the vector. This is horizontal, of course. This is parallel with the x-axis and the i-hat unit vector direction. And as a result, there is no component of the initial velocity in the y-axis or in the j-hat unit vector direction. So say this is the vector u, then the vector u is, uh, remember it's a resultant vector, okay? So it's made up of u sub x, i-hat, plus u sub y, j-hat. However, u sub y, j-hat is equal to zero. Therefore, in actual fact, u is equal to u sub x, i hat only. Or you could say u sub x, i hat, plus 0, j hat. Alright, that's the, that's the next important part about this. And this is the, that was the only subtlety, really, if, uh, if you knew about displacement already. So the particle is projected like this, and he goes down to the ground like that. Alright, so this will say, I'm going to call this, this arrow here, the vector u. So, the next thing we need to do is do UVAST for this. <coughs> Excuse me, so it says, how, how much time will it take before it hits the sea? So when it hits the sea, it, the motion is over. And when it hits, hits the sea, its displacement will be negative 78.4 meters. So, let's just do our UVAST again. Uh, that's the x-axis, the y-axis. Like so. Alright, that's nothing new for us. So actually, I'm just going to make that, we'll say, slightly more even. The initial velocity for the y-axis is, of course, as we said, zero. Its acceleration is g. The distance travel, or now S is displacement, it's not really a distance, and we said that was negative 78.4.
If you said positive 78.4, you'd be wrong because that would mean the displacement was going upwards, which is incorrect. That would be like firing something from ground onto a cliff. That would be that would give you a positive displacement. The time, of course, is the same for both, and the acceleration for the x is zero as normal, and its initial velocity, we're told, is 98 meters per second. So if you uh, the magnitude of u is equal to 98, and we're also told that we know, as we've said before, that u is equal to um, u sub x i hat plus 0 j hat, therefore u is equal to u sub x, and uh, we know that u is equal to 98, therefore u sub x is also equal to 98. That's not a vector, that's a number, like that. Alright, so we know that the initial velocity in the x dimension is equal to 98. So let's just put that in there, like so. Now, we're asked to find when the particle hits the ground. So what I'm going to do is find the time at which the displacement in the y direction is negative 78.4 meters. So let's do that. So s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t, or ut plus a half at squared. So we'll say s sub y is equal to ut, which is 0t, plus a half gt squared, so that of course is just equal to half gt squared. And we know that's equal to minus 78.4 meters, therefore gt squared is equal to twice 78.4 meters. Like that, therefore t squared is equal to minus 156.8 over 9.81. And t, t then, of course, is equal to the square root of that. Alright. And that's equal to 3.9 meters, or 3.9 seconds, so we'll say 4 seconds. Alright. So we know that after 4 seconds, the particle projected horizontally from 78.4 meters high will have hit the ground. And is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So part B of the question. If the angle of projection was raised to 30 degrees with the horizontal, find the time it will take to correct to one decimal place, of course, to hit the ground. So let's just look at this. We go back up to our diagram here. Now this this uh, will say does no is no longer correct. We know that it is taken from 78.4 meters, and I know that that's a position on a velocity time diagram which makes no sense. But just bear with me. So it is projected at an angle theta. All right, we'll say this here is u, and this this is 30 degrees, and of course the particle goes down to ground as normal, like so. This would be the vector v. So we need to resolve this vector. Remember, it's a component vector made up of two resultant, or two, or as a resultant vector made up of two component unit vectors, namely these two I've drawn in here, u sub x i hat and u sub y j hat. And we know, of course, that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. Now I'm just going to rub out the rest of this motion here because we don't need it. It just clutters up our diagram. And we need to resolve this uh, resultant vector u. We've done this loads of times, so the answer here is 30 sine, or it's not, not it's u, u sine 30, and this is here is equal to u cos 30. And we know what u is because we're given it, and that's equal to 98 meters per second. All right, so if we go back down here, we know that 98, that's no longer correct. That's equal to 98 cos 30. And this here is equal to 98 sine 30. Just to write this out explicitly for you, just go down here. Just to write it out explicitly for you again, it's always good to see these things. If we say the vector u is equal to u sub, a, u sub x i hat, well, the vector will say u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat like so. That's what we've done with our, with our little triangles. Therefore u is equal to u times cos 30 i hat plus u sine 30 j hat like so. And we know the magnitude of u is equal to 98. 
Therefore, u is equal to 98 cos 30 i plus 98 sine 30 j hat. I know you couldn't see the rest of it there, but it's, uh, you know, we've seen this before. Now you can see it there. All right, so that's just it explicitly, just for, just for the sake of it. And to be honest, I'm assuming at this stage you know that. And if you don't, it's no big deal. All right, so what we need to do is find, of course, we're trying to find, uh, we're trying to find how long it takes before it hits the ground. So we use the exact same procedure this time. Uh, we use the exact same procedure this time. Just let me have a think here for a second. So we need to find the distance here first of all. So that's equal to ut plus a half at squared. Right? So s sub y is equal to ut. So it's 98. <coughs> excuse me. Sine 30 t plus a half g t squared is equal to minus 78.4 all right so let's make that smaller that's a minus there all right so let's just solve this I'm going to rearrange it first so we're going to have how we're going to rearrange this so I'm going to say that minus 4.9 t squared plus 98 sine 30, we'll find out what that is. That's 49. Like so. Notice, of course, that I've put in the powers of the t. t to the 1 is 1. Uh, sorry, t to, the, t to the 1 is t, and t to the 0 is 1. So of course 78.4 multiplied by 1 is just 78.4. So that's the same, that there is the same as this. Then just uh, get rid of, we'll, we'll say rearrange it so we only have positive signs. Like so. Now the important thing to remember here is this is a polynomial because it has powers. The highest power in this case is 2, so it's a polynomial of degree 2, or called quadratic. So the formula to solve a quadratic is minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now in this case, just to explicitly point it out, a is equal to plus 49, or 4.9, b is equal to negative 49, and c is equal to negative 40, or 78.4. So let's just do that. So it's minus times minus 49 plus or minus the square root of something else over um, 9.8, 2 times 4.9. Now, I, I don't like writing out that square root because it's quite big. So I'm just going to do it here in my calculator. So b squared is minus 49 squared minus 4, 4.9 minus 78.4. It's a positive number, which is good. Square root that. We get 62.75. All right. Now, if you look at this, if you examine it carefully, now, of course, you can work out both answers here, but you'll see this is going to be positive 49 minus 62 in one case, and that's going to give a negative number. And it's just to trying to find out a time. You can't have a negative time, so that will say that solution doesn't matter. So just go for the positive solution, which is 49 plus 62.75 divided by 9.8, giving you a time of 11.4 seconds. And that's correct. All right, 11.4 seconds. So what we need to do now is we know that after 11.4 seconds, our particle is after hitting the ground. And we want to find how far the particle has gone in the x-axis in that time. So let's just note what t is. So s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared. So it's 98 cos 30 t plus a half 0 t squared, which is equal to 0. All right. And we know that t is 11.4, like so. So let's just work that out in our calculator. So it's 11.4 multiplied by the cos of 30 multiplied by 98 
excuse me, I made a bags of that. Give me 967 meters. 967. Now, just let me have a look here for a second. Find the time. Actually, it only has to find the time, which is 11.4, which is correct, of course. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.